Like I said, go around slowly, putting the pivots in the pivot holes, and that's why I use this uh, plumbing fixture that way I can turn the movement as I go. Uh, as you go, tighten up your nuts. Uh, they, I use a pair of tweezers or a screwdriver. They do make a tool that has a notch in it, and you would go underneath the movement and say this you go underneath the movement where it has a, uh, a pivot and that notch grabs a hold of the pivot and that way you can move it around I don't have one of those tools I use a pair of tweezers but I got one more pivot to go and when you're down to your last pivot um, once you uh, put it in the case will basically snap shut. I'm going to try to do this on camera if I can. As mm, there it went. And now you can tighten down all your nuts. Um, bring or tighten everything down. You can um, do a functional test to make sure everything is working as it's supposed to work on both sides. Um, I still have to put the uh, spring for the hammer on. And that spring, the uh, loop end goes into this. Uh, piece of sticking out and then the hook in goes right here I'm going to do that now uh, off camera okay I got the spring attached like I said the loop in connects to this extension of the hammer and the other end connects right here that way it does its thing and when you do the functional test remember when the the uh, bird wire it has the uh, the wire attached to it it has to go on the inside of this wire that way when you do the functional test watch what happens The wire for the hammer, um, sorry, the wire that for the bird that's coming off this section right here, it's making the bird go out of the clock. So now we have to put the other parts back on. Oh, by the way, this particular case, the uh, wire for the bird was not on. So, I bent it. And I wrapped it. And it comes out right here. That way it bounces back like it's supposed to do. So, now we have to put uh, the other parts on. In reverse order as we took them up. I did put the uh, the rod here back in that has to do with the cuckoo. It drops and it's when the cuckoo is uh, is done. But we before we put the um, rack levers back on and the uh, rack and snail. We want to oil each and every pivot. And this is where people mess up, to include myself. Um, this is a drawing of a pivot and a pivot hole. You want to use uh, clock oil of your choice. I use synthetic motor oil myself. 
Um, but you want to use clock oil of your choice. And you want to dip just enough clock oil into this pivot hole that fills about half of this hole. Now this is magnified like a thousand times. But basically you only want to put enough oil that it stays inside the hole. If it gets out on the clock plate, you put too much in. Now, over time, with dirt and other foreign obstacles, over time, with these pivots rotating back and forth, that dirt acts like sandpaper, and it will wear out your pivot holes, and then you'll have to put some different uh, bushings in the pivot holes. So, um, I used to have a needle, a syringe with a needle on it, but it broke. But you could take a piece of flat wire and smash it. You could take a toothpick and dip it in your oil and put it in these pivot holes. But, uh, like I said, have a rag um, on hand Make sure you don't have any oil on the plates. Um, I've bought the uh, clock oilers in the past. And to me, again, it's my own personal experience. The clock oilers do a good job. But... From my experience, they also put too much oil into the pivot holes. It only takes a minute drop of oil to go into the pivot holes. You'll have to experience it, come up with the best uh, solution for yourself. Um, but it only takes a minute drop. If it gets on the case... You got too much. The plates, I mean. If it gets on the plates, you got too much. Now that you got the movement oiled, it's time to put the rack stop lever and the lift stop lever back in. Remember, they went together with these Eclipse. These Eclipse slide into a a notch. Let's see if I can show you the notch and get it close enough to it. But there's a, a notch. I think you could see it right there. All the way around this rod on the rack stop levers and lift stop levers. And I use magnetic screwdrivers. It helps me to put the Eclipse in. If you had the uh, friction clips that I was talking about in the beginning uh, that go in the back, um, they're really hard to put down. Uh, using a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, you can force them down on there. But I like these lab, uh, Eclipse a lot better than I do those friction clips. But I'm going to go ahead and put those back on now. When you go to put the rack stop lever back in, remember the uh, pin that sticks up on the third wheel on the um, strike side. It has to catch the tab and it does that when this tab is down in this cam. If it's not in that area, you might have to um, um, readjust this third wheel so it's fitting in the proper position. Because if it's not, then the cuckoo will not stop cuckooing um, because the the wire is not able to catch the bent tab 
when this is down in the position. Now, some might take this cam off. It's a friction fit. And that would be the easier thing to do if you were able to take this cam off instead of taking it all apart again to put this wheel where that tab is. But I don't like messing with these friction cams. You do what you want to do. Once you got those on, you need to put the uh, rack and snail and minute arbor back on. The minute pinion goes on first. Remember, this is what has the uh, washer to prevent the snail from coming off. The rack and snail basically have to be put on at the same time because the rack has to fit down in between the snail's gear and the snail itself. So uh, you put them on at the same, uh, about the same time frame to, uh, in order to get those down in the proper areas. I like turning my snail. That way I can um, put the washer and e-clip on that area. I like turning my snail <coughs> to where the snail is in this position right here where you got this notch. It gives me more room to put the washer and e-clip on. So that's what I'm going to do now. Once you got it all together you need to do a function test on the uh, uh, strike side. You push the uh, rack stop lever over some. And then turn the great wheel. The rack stop lever has this bent tab here where the cam is. The cam has 